recently appreciating that we have microbes that are normal part of us. It's like another organ, but we know nothing, you know, very little about them. We have up to one and a half kilograms of living bacteria um, working and developing functions that uh, help us uh, for survival. What we are discovering is that humans are not just human cells, they are the association, very intimate association between human cells and microbes. The gut microbiota is a complex ecosystem of microbes, including bacteria, fungi, virus, that live in our gut. Really in the last decade, what we've recognized is in fact that the microbiome that we carry around with us is an important source of our nutrition, important source of health and well-being, and this field has literally exploded. We need the bacteria to process the vegetal fibers and provide us energy, uh, nutrients, vitamins, proteins. The gut is often referred to as the second brain because it has its own nervous system in, in the gut called the enteric nervous system. Microbes are required for a large pr proportion of serotonin synthesis and they affect neurotransmitters and neuropeptides, signaling factors uh, for neurons. If you take away the microbiota, you can change behavior and different aspects of brain function. The gut is the window where the, the immune system uses to recognize the external world from an immunological point of view means to understand when a microbe is a friend, allow him to live inside us, and when a microbe is a danger for our health and reject it. The first bacteria that colonize those vaginally delivered babies, in fact, are skin type bacteria that are present in the vagina. When babies are born by cesarean section, in fact, their initial bacteria are the ones that are present in the environment. So maybe the ones that come from surfaces of counters or uh, uh, hospital beds or other uh, hospital workers. Uh, recent studies show that, in fact, there are bacteria present in breast milk and that these are passed into the infant. I think our diet is probably the most significant influencer of our microbiota. We can see that, for example, if we take a fecal sample from somebody who is a vegetarian compared to somebody who is a meat eater, then you can immediately tell the difference just by which microbiota are present. And we believe it's important to eat lots of bacteria. Probiotics are bacteria which you have to ingest live because they're found in dairy products. The diverse diet leads to a diverse microbiota, which is most resistant then to some insult, some change, like through antibiotic therapy or traveling or disease. Well, there are many menaces to the, to the health of our microbiota. Um, maybe the biggest one is, is the overuse of antibiotics. In the United States, it's been estimated that 70 or 80 percent of the antibiotics used in childhood are excessive or wrong. And, and that antibiotic will kill or suppress many bacteria, even bacteria that are not the target. Uh, the idea that we are actually super organisms, that we only have our health and our mental ability as a result of not only our genetics but also our bacteria has really shocked science. Ten years ago we wouldn't have believed this, now everybody believes it. Oncologists, nutritionists, gastroenterologists of course, uh, allergologists, um, cardiologists, endocrinologists, they're all interested mm -hmm. today in the gut microbiota. This will be one of the most exciting things of the first half of this century.